Thank you so much, Marina. Um, so before I start my, my, my story, I need to tell you something about me. Um, I'm really bad at talking to women. It, it started when I was very young. When I was eight years old, there was this girl that I really liked that was crazy about her, but I was terrified of talking to her or her knowing about my feelings, but I, but I still wanted to find some sort of way to tell her how I felt about her. So uh, my plan was to give her a chocolate, you know, to show her how, how I felt, but, but again, because I was terrified of talking to her, I, I, I had this idea of giving the chocolate to my cousin, and then my cousin would give it to her saying, here, I don't want this, do you want it? And that's how she got my chocolate without me being there, or her ever knowing it was from me. From then on, I failed every time with every single girl I ever met. And then one day, I picked up a guitar and I started a band. And that didn't change a single thing. <laughs> you know, I was even worse. I also started a job in the advertising industry as a creative writer. And male creatives like to brag about having lots of women, but, but again, not me. <laughs> um, and and, and it, to the point, like, once this guy that I used to work with asked me, so uh, what got you late the most, music or advertising? And he answered, pain, um, which is not ideal, you know what I mean? And then he said something even worse. He said, all right, you care about music for real. It's like, sure, whatever you have to say, I'm going to go with it. Um, so in 2009, when this girl Martina friends me on Facebook, I freak out. Not only I don't know how to talk to women, but Martina is completely out of my league. She's smart, she's cool, she's extremely beautiful, and I look like the son of Frank Zappa and Weird Al Yankovic. Um, so it's not ideal, the situation, again. But what's even worse, uh, not only that, but Martina is also the sister of my good friend and guitarist in my band, Joaquin. Um, our band is called Flashbacks, and we just released our second album, and we're days away from playing our biggest concert yet, at the Roxy in Buenos Aires, where we're from, and I can't ruin this. Um, Joaquin joined the band in 2007 when the previous guitarist quit the band because I started dating his sister. Um, <laughs> I guess music does help me meet women, but mostly they're related to my bandmates, you know what I mean? That's sort of like my spiel uh, that I go around. Um, but here's the thing, there's a, an old saying in, in Argentina that goes, a friend's sister has a mustache. Meaning, of course, that since only mostly men have, you know, mustaches, if you're a straight man like I am, you're not even interested in men. So why bother risking, you know, a friendship and, and losing a band member just before your most important concert over his sister, who is, you know, a man? Well, to tell you the truth, Martina makes me feel pretty gay about her, you know. Um, so uh, we make plans to go out the night before the big concert. And uh, I don't tell Joaquin about it because there's a big chance that I'm going to ruin everything anyway. Um, but because of that reason also, I have been practicing this very profound and romantic speech that I'm going to say to her uh, once I have you know, my cue to say it. And, and that once I say it, Martina's gonna feel no other thing but an urge to kiss me. You know, that's, that's how I am, how I am. So, of course, our day is, is going to be going to a concert because that's who we are. And Martina wants to go to see this band that she really, really likes. And uh, uh, what she doesn't know is that I already know the band and I really, really hate them. And I hate their pretentious name in French. But what am I going to say? I just say yes and we go. But luckily for me, when we get there, uh, the concert is already sold out and there's already a line of people waiting to get in. And in that line, we run into one of my friends, Gaston, on a first date with this girl that I had a really bad first date some months before, mostly I guess because she's not related to anyone in my band, I don't know yet. Um, but you know what, things are a little awkward and, and, and Martina doesn't know that, she just sees me being awkward around people that I'm supposed to be friends with, which is not good, and I'm starting to ruin everything, so it's like really worrying me. Um, and then I remember that there's another band playing that night that I really, really like and I want her to really, really like, and you know, she says, yes, let's go there, we go there. We get in really quickly, and instead we run into my friend Roberto, by, by some chance, um, and uh, Martina goes, um, we run into people you know everywhere you go, I think it might be really popular, which couldn't be farther from the truth, but it seems to be working, so I don't deny that I'm back in the game. <laughs> All right. Now, first dates are supposed to be for you to you know, talk and get to know each other, and, and so we do, and for the longest time we talk about 
what drugs we like the most and how much we have done them, um, to the point where you eventually have to ask, so uh, we're going to talk about anything else other than drugs, you think? And she goes, yes, but about what? And that's my cue to bring out my very profound and romantic speech I have been practicing all day. Now, I would love to tell you what that profound and romantic speech was, but it was so cheesy and so cringy that my brain completely blocked the memory. But I guess if I have to give you an example of what the message and the feeling I was trying to send through and convey was, was something like, Martina, you're really beautiful. Not just on the outside, but also on the inside. I really like you as a person. I like you like I like finding money in a pocket of a pair of jeans I haven't worn in a while. I like you like a child likes a puppy he just found in the rain. I like you like I like waking up on a Saturday thinking it's a weekday and then realizing it's a Saturday. See, all that is so romantic and you're, you and I are meant to be because that's irresistible. And then I go... And as I'm just leaning there in my head, waiting for my kids, all I hear is Martina going, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, you just told me. I ruined it, I knew it, I ruined it. But no, I don't give up, I'm very persistent. So I just put my fingers in her jean, in her jean very gently, and I go, look at me. And when she does, I kiss her and we start making out, and it's amazing, I'm out of this world. And when we're done, the only thing that I can think of saying is, well, there goes my concert and my band, right? But Joaquin didn't get mad at that, uh, mostly because we didn't tell him that night. Um, and the following night, our band sold out the Roxy in Buenos Aires, and it was like the biggest night of my life. And it was so much fun, and Martina was there, Joaquin was there, and it was great. Uh, and a year later, we got married. Uh, thank you, yeah. And we adopted three cats who we treat like our children. And we had two children who we treat like cats. <laughs> And next Saturday, we're going to be celebrating our 13th anniversary. Um, yeah. And here's the thing, here's the thing. What I realized is that my previous friend who quit the band because I started dating his sister, he didn't know something very important that Joaquin knew and Martina knew. Because Martina now sings in my songs and Joaquin still plays in all my music. And that made me realize that music is a great place to find a family. And family is a great place to play music. And if you stick around long enough, you might see your friend's sister actually grow a mustache. <laughs> Thank you so much.